Hey yo, what's going on everybody? You already know who it is. It is your boy Thesis and we are back for another one. In this video, we're gonna be discussing how to record vocals. I'm gonna give you a basic setup, a basic tutorial on how to make sure that you can get the best vocal that you can. Of course, each setup is different. So of course, a lot we have a lot of home studio producers now that are using these techniques, but I wanna get you to the place of where this can be a sort of uh, easy setup for you to get the cleanest vocal possible. So without any further ado, let's just get right into it. So today I am using Pro Tools. Of course, this can go for any DAW. So it doesn't matter what DAW that you use. This is just the DAW that I chose to use today. The first thing I wanna say first before we even get into mixing vocals, right? The first thing you wanna do is make sure that you have the placement of your mic in the right place. There are certain areas where you record where if you have a hollow place in your uh, area, then you have to make sure that you get the right uh, treatment in your room. So what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that your placement of your mic is in an area where you can get the driest vocal possible if you can't get that then that means that you have to try to treat your mic and the room as well there are other things out there that uh you can put over your mic but like i said the first thing you want to focus on is making sure that your placement of your mic can process the driest vocal possible so in the case here i actually have templates as well which is another key you're not going to have the same template for every person because every person has a different vocal every time so you want to make sure that even though you're doing this as a preset that you want to make sure that this doesn't match everything that you do across the board i'm going to go through and show you the step of how to get the cleanest vocal possible and even though i'm using pro tools you can use these vst plugins in whatever daw that you're using okay so the first thing is is that um usually when i go and record vocals i usually separate them out so it depends on how many you know tracks that the person wants to use and usually i just give them like five or six to start this is just a standard basic template that i use just to get myself started so i don't have to go and add all the plugins when i want to start recording for a session um, the first thing you want to do in your vocal, even though you might have the driest vocal possible, you're still going to have what they call white noise. And I'll leave some information in the description as well, a tip and tool for you to check out what white noise is. So I want to go over the first lineup of what I use. And this is how I get the driest vocal possible in my setting. Okay. So you guys can use this. Hopefully this will help you guys out. The first thing I usually do is I usually add a de-esser. So when I add the de-esser, I usually start off with a preset, right? The preset is depending on whether it's a male or female. Um, and then I usually go from there. In this case, I have the preset saved as a male. Um, the next thing I have up is what they call a noise gate. Now, if I can't stress this enough, you have to make sure that you have a noise gate on every single one of your vocal tracks now if you're bussing your vocal tracks that's different then that means that you can use one uh, noise gate to suffice for all the tracks that you have that are bust to that but if you're doing individual vocals that aren't bust or things like that and you want to kill your background noise then a noise suppressor is going to be key that's what's going to give you and help you out with giving you the cleanest vocal that you're going to record so uh, this is the next thing that I have in my lineup. Usually it varies. So depending on the setting that you have right now, I have 75 for some people that might be a little too high. I usually go between like 60 and 75. I have a booth as well. And because I have that, that suppresses the noise as well. But I use the noise suppressor as an additional way to make sure that the gate closes after the person finishes saying or rapping or doing whatever they're doing with their vocal. Uh, the next thing I have in the lineup. Now, this one you might not have, um, but as far as automation is concerned for your vocal, um, I use this from um, Waves, which is called Vocal Rider and Vocal Rider basically is automation automatically for your vocal as they're recording what it does is it usually goes within a certain range and it keeps the vocal the same decibel pretty much give or take but it doesn't go over or under a certain range so say for instance you have this right here uh this is a smooth ride setting this is the actual uh way that it comes set up so when you go on and uh start off it starts like this and usually what i do is i just load a smooth ride and the smooth ride gives me the smallest uh location possible for 
going up and down on the scale as they're singing or rapping and it's a very useful tool if you guys haven't checked this out definitely go to waves and cop the vocal rider it helps out with automation now if you guys don't do this then you're gonna have to automate every little single thing on the track once you record so that's one reason why i wanted to get this because this is such a useful key now another thing that you want to focus on also when you're doing vocals is that you want to make sure that you don't uh, burn out your computer you don't want to over process your computer every computer is different every process is different ram is different depending on you know how much you have in your computer right now plugins that you're going to use you can really really kill your computer with all the processing and especially when it comes to multiple tracks with vocals on it so a way to alleviate that is to bus your vocals to a track and if you're going to use the same vst or the same plugin for all of those vocals then this is a good way to do this now depending on what door you use you can go and add a track and then you can add a bus or auxiliary track to the end close to where the uh, master and fader is and then uh, what you do is you put the plugin in and then you take that as an insert and then go to your send in your DAW. So depending on what DAW you use, make sure that your uh, instructions show you how to go from insert to send, because what I'm going to show you now will basically help as far as uh, vocals and for processing on your computer. So what I have first is uh, the Fab Filter Reverb. I love this reverb. And what I usually do is I usually start off with a default setting and uh, I usually work around while they're recording to find out the best reverb that will be for that vocal. Once I get that, I usually do that across the board for every vocal. And so that I don't have to go on every single channel and add that, I added reverb as an auxiliary and then uh, put it to a send. And now since I have the send, every one of those have their own tracks. And then you can basically turn the volume up and down. Of course, yours is not gonna come up unless you're using Pro Tools, it's not gonna come up on a channel strip like this it might come as a knob or it might come as uh it might come as a different channel but it all do, again depends on your dog but usually what you do is that's the best way to save processing power for your computer so that you're not over killing everything i have a second auxiliary right here which is a vocal bus so the first one was a reverb bus so that all reverb goes across the board and then i have a vocal bus which then shows uh basically another channel strip from waves and this is a solid uh state logic which is another good uh channel setup filter and usually what i do is i usually go and just pick one of the uh vocal ones i usually pick a lead vox and for that that starts off my vocal chain for the vocal bus and then i go and add an f6 which is like a vocal cleaner uh it depends on again what you're doing but for me i'm doing vocals in this case again that's going to be case by case so try not to you know just use it pick a preset and then go from there so as you see i did that same thing i took the auxiliary i went here added it as a bus and went and just put a vocal uh bus on the send so now i can control how much volume goes in and out for that as far as the vocal is concerned once you're recording make sure that when you're recording vocals that you take out the space in between as well meaning there is space in between vocals you know little uh places where the person might stop and what you want to do is you want to even take that out and what the noise gate will do is once that little space is taken out then the noise gate will catch it and then it will make it seem as if it's a normal flow you want to make sure that you don't have any air in the background because you're going to be using processing over that vocal and that right there is going to be a headache when you have too much reverb before you start and then you might have to use what they call deverb to take the reverb out of the processing and then process your vocal that's just too much so try to get the driest vocal possible by making sure that you have a correct enclosure making sure that your mic has a mic a good mic placement and that the area that you're recording your mic doesn't have a whole bunch of noise it's, it's just that simple again if you guys like this video please make sure that you like and subscribe to the page also make sure that you check out all the other videos and hit that notification bell so that anytime we have videos like this tutorials or other things you guys will be the first to get that notification again i'm extremely uh blessed and thankful that you guys are coming to the page and uh, hopefully this helps you guys out when it comes to processing and mixing your vocals so without any further ado you already know who it is it's your boy thesis peace Oh,